Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to you guys about the Bedbug DNA test. Yes, you heard me right. This is like uh, something from uh, CSI or uh, some other crime scene investigation show. And what it is, is it's called a Bedbug DNA test. And it's a test that a scientific company basically came up with where they can test for Bedbug DNA. And just like you see in all your crime scene type shows, you know, as bed bugs are, you know, in a bed or infesting a bed or a couch and they're moving around, they have the potential to leave their DNA behind. Basically, you know, fragments of their exoskeleton or, or whatever the case may be. And this lab has basically designed a test where they can test for that DNA. And so it's basically the two ways that we see it being used is to swab an area, basically take a, you know, swab and, and, and rub, say, the area, the corner of a mattress or the bottom of a box spring, and then test that swab for the presence of DNA. And so that's a way to see if you have a bed bug infestation, or use the test to help you identify if something that you have is a bed bug or related to bed bugs. I can't tell you how many emails I get from people that say, you know, I found black flecks of dirt or, or some sort of black spotting in my bed. You know, it's round, it's black, it's this. What do you think it is? And, and most of the time I have to answer, you know, I really don't know. I, I can't tell unless I'm there and I see it myself. But what you could do is you could take this swab and this DNA test I'm talking about and swab over the black spots or the bug itself. And you can even send the bug into this lab and they will test it for you and tell you if it is either a bed bug or related to bed bugs. And so real quick, let's talk about the test itself and what you need to do. And then I'll tell you where it can and can't be used. That's a very important part of this is that you have to understand, and I'll say it up front right now, that if you've had a bed bug infestation in the past, this is not the right test for you to determine if you still have bed bugs. Bed bug DNA takes a really long time to denature and change. And so say if you had bed bugs three months ago, you think they might be back and you want to test for them. If you take a swab, it may pick up on that old infestation. And so if you've had them in the past, this is not the right test for you. But if you haven't had them or you don't think you have and you want to test your home or test something you've collected, whatever the case may be, this may be an easy way for you to start to get an idea on whether you have bed bugs or not. And so let's talk real quick about what you do. Now, unfortunately, I looked around my office and I don't have any Q-tips. And basically, it's an easy way to do this test. You take a Q-tip out of your you know, household Q-tip container, and we're going to use these tweezers as an example of a Q-tip. And what you do is you take that Q-tip, and I'm going to use my chair right here, for instance. And what you do is you swab an area that you want to test for bed bugs. And you just take that Q-tip and rub it over an area. And what that will do is it will pick up on that DNA if there is any there. And so you're going to go to the corners of your mattresses, and most importantly, say the bottom of the box spring. You're going to swab around the edge of the bottom of that box spring. And you're going to keep going, and, and you can use one swab for a pretty large area. The only thing that's going, to, that's going to require you to use a new swab is if you have, say, a very dusty, dirty bottom of the box ring. If you build up too much dust on that swab, that may affect the test. But you can keep going as long as that Q-tip isn't getting dirty and, and dusty and whatnot. And so you're going to go ahead and do that, and say I swab this area, and I'm done swabbing now. That's what I want to test. All you're going to do is take that Q-tip, Put it in a Ziploc bag. You may even want to put it in two Ziploc bags. Package it up, and you're going to ship it back to the company that's doing the testing. And what they're going to do is they're going to test it for DNA, bed bug DNA, and they're going to tell you whether bed bug DNA was present or not. It's an affordable way to get a quick look into whether or not you think an area might have bed bugs. Now, that's basically the DNA test. It doesn't really get any simpler than that. That's all that you do. Remember, you really want to get to the bottom of the box spring, cracks and crevices, folds and couches, the areas where you think bed bugs might be. You're going to send it back, and they're going to tell you if it has bed bug DNA. Now, a couple quick things that you need to be aware of. One of which is, as I said, if you have bugs in the past, this is not the right test for you, because this will pick up on the old DNA. And so it may say, yes, there is bed bug DNA there, but it could have been from the old infestation. Now, number two, just because you get, say, no bed bug DNA, it does not definitively mean that you don't have bed bugs. You know, it, in testing this science, I had a couple bugs run across the surface, and I took a swab and swab behind them as they ran, kind of testing to see if a bug just ran across the surface, could I pick up the DNA? 
And sometimes I did, but there were a lot of times where I did not. And so you could have a really low-level infestation. Bugs could have run across the surface a few times, not left any DNA behind, and you may not pick up that DNA, but you may still have bed bugs. But what I can say is that if bed bugs are there and you take that swab and you haven't had bugs in the past and it does test positive for bed bug DNA, there's probably a good chance that you have bed bugs. And so basically how I see this is a very affordable way because it's, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, let's say just $20 or so or $30 or whatever the price is to, to do a quick check to see if you think you might have bed bugs. Somebody's being bitten in a bed. You want to do something real quick. You don't have the money to hire a professional to come in for a couple hundred dollars. You just want to see real quick if you have something, you do the swab. Sure enough, it comes back positive. Now you know you probably might have a problem. Now if it comes back negative, you got to take it with a grain of salt. You still may want to call on a professional. There are other things out there, interception devices, that you can go out and purchase to help you identify if it's a problem. And then as I said, it's a good way to say send a bug in or swab a bug or swab some black spotting in your bed that you think might be spotting and see if it does test positive for bed bug DNA. And so it's a good way to check something that you have that you want to see if there is any bed bugs relating to that spot or that area or that bug or whatever the case may be. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is bed bug DNA testing, CSI style. Um, it really is kind of like one of those things you would see in CSI, but it, it can be effective. As I said, you want to caution yourself when you do the test. If you had an old infestation, you might want to stay away from this. And if you get a negative result, it does not mean that you don't have bed bugs. It just means that wherever you swab, there was no bed bug DNA left behind. And that is bed bug DNA testing. Um, if you have any questions on this topic or any other topic relating to it, you know the email address, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. And I hope to see everybody soon enough.